This is Dr. Mimi Lam from Metro Health Medical Center. In this video called Hyponatremia Part 2, I will explain three less common mechanisms for developing a low serum sodium concentration. In Part 1, we talked about how hyponatremia occurs because of an impaired ability to excrete water. This can be because of a limited amount of filtrate or inability to make a maximally dilute tubular fluid in the loop of Henle, or inability to suppress ADH secretion. Now let's look at three less common but very interesting causes of hyponatremia. The first is pseudo-hyponatremia. The so-called normal value of the serum sodium concentration is 135 to 145 milliequivalents per liter. But the actual value of the serum sodium concentration is really 154 milliequivalents per liter. Check out this bag of normal or physiologic saline. This is because a volume of serum normally consists of about 93% water and 7% bulky stuff like lipids and proteins that displace water. So when the analyzer measures a volume of serum that is 93% water, the measured concentration of sodium is only 154 times 93% or 143 milliequivalents per liter. And if there is an unusually large amount of lipids or proteins in the serum, they displace a volume of water even greater than 7% and the calculation is thrown even farther off. Here, with 15% non-water volume, the measured concentration of sodium is 154 times 85% or 131 milliequivalents per liter. And the person looks like they have hyponatremia, but they don't really. Note that the plasma water itself has a normal osmolality, so no osmotic shifts occur across cell membranes. The second unusual cause of hyponatremia is primary polydipsia, which is a true water intoxication. Even if everything works perfectly, even if you have a GFR of 150 liters per day, are able to reabsorb solute in the loop of Henle to make a dilute tubular fluid of 27 liters per day, and can completely suppress ADH so that no water is reabsorbed, but all stays in the collecting tubule to be excreted, even then you can only make about 24 liters per day or one liter per hour of dilute urine. So if your water intake is greater than one liter per hour, the water cannot be excreted fast enough and you will become hyponatremic. This is what happens with psychogenic polydipsia, which is seen in psychotic patients who may have an intense craving for water as well as a dry mouth due to side effects of their psych meds. It's also been described in fraternity hazings with forced water drinking and in marathon runners who are trying to tank up before a race by drinking lots of water. The consequences, as you can imagine, may be disastrous with a rapid fall in extracellular sodium concentration and osmolality, resulting in a shift of water from outside the cells to inside. This causes cell swelling and in particular brain cell swelling, which may be manifested by nausea and vomiting, headache, seizures, and even coma and death. Finally, the ability to excrete water may be limited by a low solute intake. Remember that urine osmolality can only go as low as 50, with the urinary osmoles consisting mostly of sodium, potassium, chloride, and urea. It's not possible to create a solute-free urine or to excrete pure water. In rare cases, you may see a person who is not eating any solid food or protein at all and is consuming only large amounts of high-carb liquids, such as beer or pop, that are metabolized so that they add few, if any, osmoles to the tubular fluid. And the amount of water that can be excreted may be limited by the amount of solute available to excrete it with at 50 milliosms per liter. In this case, again, the extra water is retained and the person becomes hyponatremic. This is the so-called beer potomania, 
from the Greek word poton, which means an intense and persistent desire to drink excessive amounts of alcoholic beverages. So in summary, we have just looked at three unusual mechanisms for developing hyponatremia, where the kidney is doing everything it's supposed to, but its ability to excrete free water is overwhelmed by the quantity and or composition of fluid intake. These last two mechanisms remind us yet again that hyponatremia occurs because of a problem with water excretion.